know how else to say this. Like, this camper's got, like, a borderline identity crisis, man. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Bish's RV. Josh, the RV nerd here once again with uh, an RV that I think really, truly, almost best defines what I call a crossover camping segment. It's not a full toy hauler. It's not a full bunkhouse. It's this interesting in-betweener that sometimes it's the square peg that does fit the round hole. So take a look at this thing. What's interesting about it, this is a member of the FSX division of Salem and Wildwood. And, uh, you know, it composes their, their, their larger tandem axle toy hauler models in their Max series. That's what this is here today. One of the key defining qualities on this is that it's a full seven foot tall inside. It's got a bigger interior ceiling. And the idea behind this one is to be able to load the larger toys like it has a 12 and a half foot private rear flex room is almost what I want to call it. You could use it like a garage. You could use it like a private bunkhouse. You don't have to though. Those extra uh, upper flip down beds that create effectively a quad bunk, those are optional. So uh, by default, you'll always have a couple benches below and a floating table, but you can outfit this thing uh, to be a family camper if you wanted to, and which is really cool, because if you think about it, it could be a family camper now, and then you know maybe as the kids grow up, you could just repurpose it as a couple's model and not have to change out your whole rig. It could be your last camper the first time around, depending on what you're doing with it. Now, the thing is, it's seven foot tall. It is long. When you have a private bedroom, a living room, Slide and a 12 and a half foot private rear garage. She's long, strong, and down to get the camping on. And as a result, uh, you're not in half ton territory on something like this. These have their enclosed underbelly with tank heaters, thermostatic, so they kick on at 48 degrees and they kick off. So if you forget and you leave them on, they ain't gonna nuke the underbelly. Factory standard solar and a bunch of other cool things about this, but it's got a couple downfalls too. I wanna show you the cool things with the downfalls and you decide if this is the right one for you. It's my first time recording one of these, so if you would, leave me some comments let me know where you think they nailed it and failed it and we'll compare notes at the end of the video here leave me some comments and uh yeah let's get rolling i'm excited to see what you think about this and if i had to guess i think a lot of people are going to say man that's just uh you know that's a little too big but i hear people very commonly say in the the travel trailer toy hauler market you know, why can't they give it a private garage? Why can't, you know, why why is everything always in one open room? Well, they can do it, but it requires extra length. And I could also see some people saying, well, if I wanted something that big, I'd just get a fifth wheel. To which I say, yeah, I, I respect that. Because you're pretty much going to need the same truck that you'd tow a fifth wheel anyway. So why would you go with something like this? Well, a couple reasons. You don't have to give up your truck bed when you're towing a trailer. It's going to be a fraction of the price of an equivalent sized toy hauler fifth wheel. That's a major, major deal. And again, with that interesting kind of quad bunk potential uh, rear, you know, it's not just a garage. It could be um, uh, a three seasons dining room that's built right onto your RV. It could be a, uh, you know, a craft room. I could see somebody building it up like an office. Like there's different ways you could use this space. So um, th this is going to work, I think, for the, the folks where nothing else has just quite fit the bill. Sorry, I bumped the camera on something right there. I will say, anytime I see this kind of kitchen arrangement, though, I love it. That, that wraparound U-shaped kitchen with the dining bar, I'm a big fan of this kind of setup right here. Um, also, if I uh, cop a squat on the uh, the hide -a bed sofa, you see that you are straight across, whoop, that was further down than I thought. My, my tall butt was up a little bit high, I guess. But um, you're straight across from where the entertainment hookups would be. Now, it's also not set up for a giant television. There's not a ton of space there. But I don't think the idea behind this RV is sit inside and uh, watch TV all day. Now, you see that power outlet over there in that kind of, I'm going to call it the appliance corner of the kitchen. Because this is a stick-built camper, like we're looking at fiberglass today, and a lot of times when people see fiberglass, they automatically assume aluminum. This is a stick-built camper. By default, it has tin skin, the corrugated stuff. We're looking at it today in the Platinum X edition, which gives it the uh, X in the model number, which is why I call it the Platinum X edition, and it gives it the fiberglass uh, skin package. Um, that's one of only two options even available in this floor plan, the other being those optional uh, fold-down upper bunks that we're going to see here. I do like like those usb plugs but i feel like they should be down uh a little bit lower they're up so high that a lot of your power cord is used up just dangling uh, just my 
insight and two cents anyway. Sliding back here. I don't even have the lights on in the garage because we've got all the natural lighting flooding in from outside. Not to mention there's windows all over over the place in this thing. The garage, I think, actually has the best window coverage and viewing of the entire RV, mostly because there's just not available wall space to do that in the other areas of the camper. Uh, and again, I'll have the lights on, but start look at all the lights. There's like, there's like eight of them in here, like a very aggressive lighting package. And again, one of the major defining qualities of the Max series is that they are seven foot tall. Now it's still eight foot wide, but this is sized to be just big enough to slot a side-by-side -side ATV in here. Now, I've seen some people literally will unhook their windshields to get out of the ATV, but uh, you know, it, it is a, uh, a thing that you could possibly do. And this is one of the smallest rigs with a private garage I've ever seen that is potentially side-by-side -side capable. Something that it's cool and it's not is this little stand over here because they had to have a place to put the converter panel and they really didn't have a lot of other space for it so it kind of just got installed here but they capitalized on the opportunity and i think they kind of tried to turn chicken poop into chicken soup which is an awesome visual if you think about it and they turned that into like a little device charging stand i think that's pretty smart especially when you consider all the other things this room can do back here now just making it look even larger not only do we have that seven foot ceiling but we also have that skylight up top but like i've said a few times this thing can convert into a bunch of other purposes it doesn't have to be just a bunk room it can fold into a quad bunk the two bottom benches are always there the two upper benches are optional and the one thing on this that maybe some people don't like is there is no like uh they fold in meet in the middle mega bunk kind of feature this just does not really do that although the floating dining table might be able to bridge the gap and you could use those wedge side cushions but it's never going to be totally flat so Maybe there is an opportunity for that. I might actually circle back later in the video and double check on that. So if that's something you're curious about, stay tuned. But for now, we're going to keep on rolling. Under each of the benches, you have um, food grade storage totes. So there's six of those back here. And they, they nest into one another. If you just want to tell them, you know, move, get out the way, you can absolutely do that very easily. And there is something very fun about having this, like, elevated rear almost exclusionary patio space back here. Now, normally I, I would hope you've got a better view other than being parked right on top of a bunch of other campers, but you get the idea. Now you may notice how I uh, silently slid that table over right there, because that is free floating. So if you want to use that back here on the porch, you can. If you want to use it down on the ground, you can. And uh, when the legs fold up, it's thin and, you know, easy to manipulate and totally move wherever you want it to. Now, there was an extra little pocket of space, and I love how they didn't waste it. And they just stuffed it full of all these little cube organizer guys over here. And actually, I'm kind of putting them into use right now because all of the windows uh, in the bunk area have these like um, blackout blind shade kind of things that can go on them right there. Uh, so if you are using it as a sleeping space or you just want full privacy or it's too hot and you want to keep the sun out, you can flat block the sun out of those. And notice how it kind of dog leg lefts a little bit. And there is a little bit of a lip on there, not too much, but they fit snug enough. I, I don't feel like those are really going to be a problem bouncing around in transit. And I love that they kept the heat vents out of the floor. I... There are some benefits to floor vented heating. I've actually spent quite a lot of time um, almost defending floor vented heating in a lot of instances to potential consumers, but this is not one of those instances where I think it is the proper application. So good job there. Um, sliding back around, kind of a, a middle sort of bathroom and a sh shockingly, like surprisingly large one. First of all, that seven foot ceiling creates tons of headroom in that 30 by 36 rectangular shower um they've done this in a few floor plans the max series seems to, to to run into this all the time that toilet the position isn't wrong the angle that it's uh sitting on is wrong because it is ultra tight for uh right-handed elbows and considering how the vast majority of human beings are right-hand dominant that does seem like an oversight. So if that toilet was just angled a little bit, it would solve that issue. And maybe there's some kind of engineering problem there of which I'm not aware that prevents that. But I mean, as I kind of just mentioned, I'm not aware of one. So <laughs> that's, uh, 
I guess just my, my stupid if I would have thought before I spoke, but thinking before I speaking, it, well, obviously is not what I do because I just botched that right there. <laughs> Full viewing window in the door, but it, it's, it doesn't have a privacy shade, nor it is, is it the kind that's like shade prepped. So you're going to want to kind of keep that in mind. But I do think when you're sitting at the sofa, having the extra campsite window coverage over here is kind of a, uh, you know, a pleasant surprise. I will say if you're going to put a TV up there, you're definitely going to want uh, some kind of articulating swing arm kind of mount. Otherwise, that's just going to be a bit of a problem. Now, we're going to fly by this in just a second when we open up all the storage. I do want to mention, that's not a propane oven. Um, that is a, uh, a microwave uh, convection combo. Or it's really interesting how convections have recently been redubbed air fryers. And I am discovering a lot of people are not aware of the fact that a convection microwave and an air fryer can be the exact same thing. It's one of the best marketing things ever because if you want Americans to buy it, you relate it to food and you use the word fried. And folks, we just, I, I, I mean, well, for lack of a better way of saying it, we just eat it up. Speaking of eating it up, storage in the fridge here. At a glance, the fridge looks like it opens the wrong way, but that is a uh, ACDC kind of fridge door. It goes both ways. Um, you can flip it either direction, which I think is very, very cool. Uh, so it doesn't matter if you're coming in from the garage or if you're sitting in the kitchen, you can just reach in, grab a cold one, and whether it's, you know, uh, a frosty barley pop or if it's something... Uh, of a more mundane variety, you can you can kind of do that both ways. Now that is a hide a bed sleeper sofa there in the slide, which was actually kind of a surprise to me. I didn't expect to find that in here. To my knowledge, they don't offer a theater seat, but I might be wrong or mistaken on that. That might be something that we could double check on uh, for you. So if you're kind of curious about that, you know, give us a shout. Let us know. Now the uh, the bedroom up here. I mean, it is just nothing but the bedroom. It is uh, just the facts, ma'am, kind of camping. Um, I like the household and USB outlets. I'm kind of curious as to why they didn't put them more over these gigantic side stands that they have over there. And that is the thing. Like, uh, you know, the bedroom's really kind of packed in here. And with, like, the, the water heater and the pass-through storage, it, you don't really walk around the bed a lot. It is mostly a crawl into bed kind of situation. And this mattress comes flat smack dab against that wall right there. But the wall does make for uh, a, a really handy like TV hookup kind of station right there. Now it is a, uh, you know, not just an overhead shelf, which I appreciate, it's a full overhead cabinet. Um, and you do have dual hanging wardrobes just to kind of give you a little bit of a, a deeper look and insight into those right there. One other note I noticed here in this uh, bedroom area, these sliding pocket doors, they actually have little magnet plates. So um, if anyone does happen to rock and roll the RV around, like maybe you're just really fighting that fitted sheet sometime, uh, you can make sure that you're doing so, um, you know, in privacy. Now, the trick with a model like this, it just it's, it just doesn't have the greatest road travel access there. Like, you can get to the front bedroom from the entry door. That's where I'm standing. The kitchen counter and the sink and stuff are great, but you're not going to be able to get to the refrigerator. And with the way this one is laid out, you're also not able to pass front to back in this thing. Additionally, there's a little bit of what I personally feel is a miss back here in the garage, and that's by including these stable steps in the garage. I think back here, the more traditional fold-down steps, uh, you know, or pull-out steps would have been a, a better execution because these now fold into our cargo and loading space, which is taking, I'm eyeballing it, but like six to eight inches away from the potential width of the stuff that you could load in here. Now, oh, okay, well... Apparently, I didn't have those all quite latched in the place. By the way, if you appreciate how I'm getting you this footage, consider the fact that I'm a one-man band, and I literally had to climb in the RV, pull the steps up, and lock myself in this thing, and I'll have to figure a way to get out from here, but I think I got it figured out. If this footage makes the light of day, then I survived, and I didn't die of heat stroke inside this thing. Um, if you do get in through the back door, though, one of the features that it can offer is traveling access to the bathroom. So, uh, in theory, you know, you can get to your front bed, you can potentially get to your bathroom depending on what you have loaded and where it's at, but the fridge is flat lost. But is there a way around it? Well, 
Maybe, because the thing is, this is a cable slide system, and one of the benefits of a cable slide is that you can get away with opening it only partially. So like you can see how that window there is half covered, and now there's enough room for us to get to the fridge. I didn't have to open it much, I had to open it just enough. But for some people, that doesn't qualify, and I respect that. If you appreciate how we take the time to close the slides and give you all that extra details, though, hit that subscribe button, like our video. Let's hop outside and see what else she has to offer. I feel like I'm forgetting something. Oh yeah, we're gonna check on the bed thing. And hey, what do you know? <laughs> it works, and in fact, the factory did plan accordingly uh, because the, uh, the 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 metal frames. Um, where the uh, the two bottom benches kind of come down. They actually have a couple little Velcro catches in that table as matching Velcro on the bottom so that it kind of stays in place. Now, if you want the giant mega bed, you can do that, but there's actually another function you could perform on this. You can use it to help keep the bed separated. Now, at first glance, you might think, well, you don't even need to put the table down to keep the bed separated, sure. But if you have kids that roll over or roll off the bed at night, that might be a uh, handy little buffer space for them. Or what if they uh, roll off the upper beds? Well, first of all, you're gonna wanna get a safety rail, but in theory, it might be a little bit of a crash landing pad. In fact, let's test that theory out. How you ask? With the atomic elbow, brother. Just kidding. It's not like I would ever do that again. Now there's a couple key factors here, and one of the first things I want to say is I don't feel that this should be paired up with a half-ton pickup. And understand, with half-tons being the most commonly purchased truck out there, I just knocked out the vast majority of truck owners, the people who could possibly be interested in this thing. So I hope you appreciate the uh, transparency and candor when it comes to your safety. A couple major factors that lead me to that. First of all, it's fairly tall you know it starts to get a little bit topsy uh secondly it's 36 and a half foot long man tip to tail tongue to bumper she's long and the longer the rv the more it pushes the vehicle around and with a total gvw of uh, just over 10,000 pounds i just don't like the idea of a half ton pairing up with this now this is something um a lot of haulers lack a full unobstructed front pass-through compartment that is actually a pretty cool find something else i like on these also for the extra stability especially in a long trailer are those better st uh, stabilizer jacks those um quick drop stabilizers first of all they're like drill bit jack friendly and uh drill bit jack that sounds almost like some kind of like cajun alligator hunter yep we got another wild one we need to go call drill bit jack oh sorry if the camera lurched i just walked backwards into a slide out that was open behind me about knocked the air out of myself anyway dual entry doors um they're both anti-slam they both have the viewing window in them you know privacy shade ready they're they're ready to throw shade and the awning encompasses both which is cool the awning is right next to the edge or the doors are next to the edge of the awning though so on a rainy day you might get spritzed in the face a little and uh up top you can kind of just see peek it over there the 200 watt factory standard solar panel on these this also has a 30 amp charge controller and up front by that front pass-through compartment you can see the little black dot under the marker light um it is prepped and ready for a portable solar panel so if you are in the shade or you want to chase the sun or you just want some extra juice coming in it's an easy way to do that that doesn't require you know drill bits and screws and stuff now we have a full outside utility shower which is cool the the cold water only higher pressure sprayer port here can be handy for some cleanup things where the low pressure shower just doesn't get the job done son down below a couple cool things we've got the stinky slinky sewer hose holder because it doesn't have a rear bumper and you don't have like you could buy those aftermarket but now you don't have to got our gas grill cooker hooker right over here and the underbelly it's not forced air heated but it does have enclosed sectionalized panels that are easy to drop for service related purposes. Also, it has uh, tank heaters, factory standard, and they're thermostatic. If you don't know what that means, if you leave them on all the time, it will, uh, they'll turn on when the belly cavity gets below 48 degrees. So they just kind of temperature sense their way around things. And, um, you know, if it, dry, or if it races back above 48 degrees, they shut themselves off. So you're not sitting there boiling your holding tank. Their job is to just keep things protected. They do also include a radiant barrier in the underbelly of this just to help kind of, you know, capture and maximize the efficiency of everything. That being said, these, to my knowledge, are not cold chambered. They are not hard cold camp tested. What I can tell you knowing what I know about these is that it should be reliable extended season. 
but I can't give you any specific insights beyond that. And, you know, if the factory doesn't make the promise, I don't know how I or anyone else can either. So if, you know, here, that, that might be like if, if you're shopping around, because I get that not everybody who watches these videos buys from Bish's RV. If you're shopping around, ask the person who's representing an RV like this, hey, is that one of those Four Seasons campers? And I despise that phrase, but if they go, yep, absolutely, just get away from them because they're just trying to tell you whatever they think you wanna hear to get your money. So there's a handy little shopping pro tip. And put my own people to the test. I don't care, you know, make sure that we're up to snuff for you. I wanna make sure that, you know, we're doing the best job we can for you as well. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. Now, um, the roof is walkable. But it is prepped and ready for one of those telescopic removable ladders. You can see the bracket mounted all the way to the back of this side of the wall uh, over here. Um, man, we're actually cooking right around the outside of this one. Sweet! Uh, it is a single-headed sewer monster. The bathroom and the kitchen all drain out to a single point right here. It is right next to the slide. I guess technically speaking, the black tank pole is under the slide a little bit, but I don't think that's terrible. It does hang down awful low though, doesn't it? We're not exactly on level ground, but that is maybe a thing to kind of consider. I'm gonna, oh boy, bite off a sneeze. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> Woo! Okay, usually I sneeze in threes. I managed to at least fight one of them off. By the way, I've got a little hack for preventing sneezing. I just didn't have time to get it put in place right there. It was too late already. Pinch your nose and say banana as fast as you can. I know it sounds stupid. I swear. It works 60% of the time. It works 80% of the time. So once again, we find ourselves at the tail end of the video. <laughs> oh boy, what a joy. Anyway, thank you again for tuning in. Let me know what you think about this one. My first time going through it, so I'd really be curious to know what kind of thoughts and feedback you have. And of course, I'll leave you links in the video description if you want to check for pricing and availability. We'll have it all listed right there for you. Whether you're curious or whether you're serious, anything that we have in stock, we have pricing whenever we can listed right on there clearly for you. Uh, so no need to give us your grandmother's, you know, social security number or anything like that just to get some figures. And if we're sold out, call our team. We'll hook you up. No big deal. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Bye.